So fully enclosed spheres are awesome to make, really important. Obviously, uh, you need to make sure that there is a hole in it somewhere before you fire it or else you're going to create a nice bomb for your kiln. Um, with these spheres, what I'm going to talk about today is how to, one, carve into it, and hopefully this video you can hear the air coming out. It's kind of cool. Um, and then carve into it, carve the shape of the lid that I'm going to do, and then just cleaning it up, and then talk about how you want to dry it very carefully and slowly. So let's see if we can get that sound um, of the air coming out. So right now this is fully enclosed. I've drawn a line. Oh, I hope you heard that. Anyway, okay, so I am going to use my very fancy X-Acto knife here. There's all kinds of pottery tools out there. This is a really, really fantastic one to have. Um, I have several different shapes of X-Acto knives, um, and I pretty much just use this one. So I'm going to cut into it. Rather than sawing back and forth, I'm going to do my best to kind of saw gently. I don't want to rip away any of the clay. So I'm going to keep my tool completely in as opposed to coming all the way out and going back in. I'm going to keep it in there. And I'm going to follow the line that I drew using my stylus. So this was really nice to use because if you make a mistake on a stylus, you can just kind of go back over and cover it up. I definitely suggest drawing the line ahead of time as opposed to just cutting into it. Um, so let's see, where was I? Um, and I'm going to feel for where I was and I'm just going to gently go through. This is leather hard by the way and I want it to be leather hard so that it, I can hold on to it fairly firmly and yet still come through without breaking any of the clay out. So you can absolutely do sharp edges on these, um, just being super cautious on these corners because that piece right there will be very easy to break off while it's leather hard and while it's bone dry. So I'm going around, I know that some of the edging is kind of getting misshapen, that's totally cool. I'm going to go around and clean it up later. And this kind of feels like the texture would be like nice cold butter. Um, you can carve through, you're not going to mush it with your finger. And I think I've gotten all the way around at this point. I'm just going to kind of double check really gently until I can feel my blade slide through. And then I'm going to take it upside down and it popped out. So you're going to notice that I've got all of this rough edging. So what I'm going to do is take a damp sponge like this. It's a pretty dense sponge. I'm going to be very careful in smoothing out my edges. I don't want to get this wet again and actually I need a towel. I'm just going to smooth this down. I'm smooth the inside. I'm not trying to reshape any of the curves that I've just made. When you're getting into really tight spots, a cool tool that I made for myself was using the same kind of sponge. I cut a piece of it off 
and I stuck it on the end of a chopstick. So the tip of it is still pretty soft, but you can see where the chopstick ends. And I actually, when I need to get into some tight spots, this thing is freaking awesome. And yeah, like I said, chopstick, and I just cut off, and I can still use that one, obviously. So in any case, like I said, not trying to reshape, just smoothing out the edges. And if I come to any corners like this, I'm gonna be really careful not to bend them in. You can very easily reshape things accidentally, and I've definitely learned the hard way. Um, if it's off slightly, it'll just get exacerbated during the drying process, and it's really frustrating to take something out of the kiln and then have it not fit. I will say that when you do go to bisque fire this, that you do want to have the lid on it. In fact, while you're drying it, you're going to have the lid on it the whole time. So here's a little corner I want to clean out. So I'm going to dampen my fancy and see how I get that in there. get the corner exactly the way that I want it. Now, you're going to hear me say this again and again. Um, there's a million YouTube videos out there on how to do things in pottery. One of the most frustrating things is watching somebody that says, this is the only way to do it. it drives me freaking crazy. No, it's not the only way to do it. And such a narrow-minded way of thinking is going to really limit your art. I want to be able to explore and experiment. And yeah, I've definitely opened up the kiln and had things explode. So if all you really wanted was to know how to cut into this, and carve it, this is exactly how you do it. So you can keep watching and watch me do the other piece and how I fit them together. Otherwise, you can kind of figure out what works best for you. So I'm really smoothing out that edging. And this almost has no moisture to it. And I'm certainly keeping my hands really dry. So I've done that side. Now obviously I need to smooth out the top but I don't want to set it on my banding wheel so what I have made again I'm gonna get this guy out of the way. Coming up with your own tools and using scraps of things that you already have in your house is fantastic. So I have this extra piece of foam that I cut some edging around that I can lay things into and it just makes it really easy. So take a quick peek at the difference of what these two look like. So pretty rough, really smooth. And I did that in just a couple of minutes. Oops, don't set the wrong one down. That's exactly what I would do is set the wrong one down and then be like, this is exactly how you break it. So I'm going to be really cautious of that edging right there because I want to keep that corner as sharp and as tight as I can. So I'm almost going to avoid smoothing out that area. Avoid it like the plague. It sucks when you get something like this and you, you get all the way around and then you break it off. Um, you can swear and smash it on the ground. That's an option. You can swear and say, all right, sweet, I'm gonna make something else out of it. Um, I've totally done that before. I love those happy accidents. Um, can't say that I love it when it happens, especially if I have something in mind. And I always love looking at the inside. So when I closed off this sphere when I was throwing it, that's that was a little inside bloop. So I'm going to keep smoothing out. 
Now what I can feel with this sponge are just some, some little divots that happen during the cutting process. Another little bump I'm going to be really careful with right there. And it seems like there's a little excess moisture on that. So another little spot that I'm not going to be, I'm going to make sure I don't, I don't want to smooth away that corner. So I'm going to be cautious to leave that there. Now a couple of the things that I had mentioned was um, when you let it dry, letting these spheres dry out, letting anything dry out, the slower the better. Um, I kind of equate it to, to getting uh, tattoos. So the slower you let your tattoo heal, or at least so I was told, um, like the cleaner you let it heal and the slower the better the color and the ink stays and I would say mine uh, following those instructions have lasted a pretty long time like that one's I don't know 20 years old um, that and keeping it out of the sun um, but letting it dry slowly and checking on it to make sure that the edges aren't warping out um, probably looks like I'm doing this more aggressively than I really am. I'm using um, a fairly groggy clay, as so you can kind of hear it. Notice at no point have I re-moistened this sponge. This is the only time you're allowed to use the word moist, because moist is just a terrible word. But um, I got it damp in the beginning as I started. And I haven't done anything to it since. Really gentle around that corner there. I want to keep that shaping as much as possible. So at some point in a minute here I'm going to put these pieces back together and this is the part where you don't want them to fit so tightly that you can't get them apart, but you need them to fit tight enough that you can see if you need to carve out any extra area. You don't want it to slide around. I am being super gentle around that edge because that's just such a good edge. And this particular globe is being made for a very special person, so I want to make sure that continuity. Okay. Okay, not okay. I'm just gonna keep saying that. The other thing to keep in mind is once it is bone dry, you can also take a green scrubby, um, like this guy, and sand it down. Now, really importantly, you definitely want to wear um, a respirator or a mask of some kind because those particles, those really fine particles, are going to get in the air really bad for your lungs. And we don't need any more damage to the lungs than we already have from just living in a city. Okay, so pretty simple. That didn't take me very long at all. Now I want to put them back together, but before I do, I want to make sure that I can get them apart. Um, so, another really fancy tool, newspaper. So, I'm going to get rid of this. my banding wheel back up. I'm going to put this guy down. I'm going to take this newspaper and I'm just going to gently lay it across there and I'm going to match up my points. That seems like a thick piece. I need more hands. So by having that piece of newspaper there I can then lift it off um, so that if it gets stuck um, I don't have to like 
break it apart. So in some cases, what I'll do is I'll actually, when I go to let it dry and sit on the shelf, I, I'll stick two pieces of newspaper like that. Um, and at this point, what I'll do is I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna feel and make sure that there's no section that is bumping out further than another. And since it's leather hard, it manipulates really easily. So I'm just gonna make sure that edging, I'm not pressing crazy hard, but that that edging is nice and smooth. You know, like if I had bumped out this, if I was super aggressive, I just wanna make sure that it, it fits together really nicely and it isn't gonna come apart. So some of these little bobbles right here, I could sit here all day and try to smooth this out, which you totally can do if you feel like it, but waiting until it's, it's bone dry and sanding it down with the green scrubby, because quite honestly, this green scrubby does wonders when it's bone dry and it'll sand down amazingly. Um, there's this one spot that I had right here where I had drawn a line and then decided, no, I want a different line. So that is how you cut open a sphere and then let it dry. Oh, you could feel it, it was a little sticky right there. So if it had gotten stuck, I could pull on, I can pull up like this to get that lid off. So nice and smooth, lay them across. And there you have it. I'd love your feedback. If you have other suggestions of ways that you have worked with spheres or carved into things like this and have some drying tips, I'd love that to make sure that things dry the way that you want to. Um, and if you have any other feedback, I'd love to hear that too. Have a great day.